Hey everyone, welcome back to the Myco Meditations YouTube channel. I'm Eric Osborne, founder of Myco Meditations. Myco Meditations is a psilocybin mushroom retreat in Treasure Beach, Jamaica. Over the years, we've worked with hundreds of people from around the world who've sought relief through psilocybin. And hundreds of these people have said the same thing, that a single session with psilocybin mushrooms was more helpful in the treatment of their anxiety, depression, PTSD, and other forms of mental illness than decades of traditional therapy. Today we are here with a Michael Meditations therapist to talk about some of the reasons that might be the case. Thanks, Eric. Hi, I'm Denise Rue. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and clinical hypnotherapist. Um, my background is working with trauma survivors and specifically adult survivors of childhood sexual abuse. I've been working full time at Michael Meditations since January of 2019. Fifteen months ago, you left clinical therapy to become a psychedelic assisted therapist in a very different setting. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell our listeners a little bit about why that is and what you've seen? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I think any good therapist wants to alleviate suffering. Mm. And working with trauma survivors who suffered greatly for decades, um, I became so frustrated with seeing someone once a week for 50 minutes or once every two weeks and just putting a band-aid on their symptoms. Um, when I came to Michael Meditations and did my own work here, I saw myself how powerful this medicine can be and how it can take you from just existing to thriving and I wanted to give that to my clients. Yeah, Denise, and since you've been with us, there's been a lot of research coming out mm -hmm. about the effectiveness of psilocybin and other psychedelics uh, for mental health and well-being. Mm -hmm. um, but we see it on the ground all of the time. Yep. What do you think it is about psychedelic-assisted therapy that really stands out and makes it more impactful? Well, the mushroom is an immense healing force, mm. which we don't fully understand. Mm. In fact, we may understand it very little. <laughs> um, but, but we know through the clinical research and in the trenches is that if we create the container for healing, you know, the mm. right set, the right setting, the mushroom is really doing the work, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. that is something we see over and over again. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas, is that the case in traditional therapy? Does the does the client take play the take the central role? Does the therapist take the central role, or is there mm -hmm. some new individual that comes from those two units coming together? That's a really interesting question and the therapeutic relationship is like any other relationship right it requires chemistry mm. and in traditional therapy the ratio of the client's input and the therapist's input is perhaps well it differs with different therapists and mm -hmm. different therapy techniques mm -hmm. but maybe it's 50 50. Mm. i would say in psychedelic therapy um if the client is, or the guest is sufficiently prepared, if they feel safe, if they have support, mm -hmm. the mushroom is doing the work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we're standing by to provide nurturance and, and guidance when it's necessary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But primarily it's the mushroom. Yes, absolutely. Uh, as a support mm -hmm. there for the individual as they go through their process. <clears throat> um, how, do, how would you perhaps compare the, the, the process of traditional therapy to the process of psilocybin assisted therapy? Mm -hmm. Well, I think there are many similarities. We're creating a safe nurturing space. We do that in the office. We do that in, in the field, mm. okay? 
And whereas in traditional therapy, the relationship that the client has with the therapist is healing, I believe that the relationship that develops within that dosing session with the guest, between the guest and the mushroom, that's primarily the healing factor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the characteristics in the therapist are, should really be the same in both settings. You want an empathic presence. You want non-directive therapy. You want the client's experience to unfold. Mm -hmm. um, you want them to learn that there is this innate healing mechanism within them, okay? Yes. A space within them that wants to be healthy, happy, and whole, and that knows how to do that. Um, you know, we say every tree will go grow towards the light. And if we just allow the healing to take place, both in the psychedelic space and in the traditional office, it will happen. It just takes so much longer mm -hmm. in traditional therapy, and you mm -hmm. never get to the levels of healing. Well, one of the things that we, therapy. one of the things that we spoke about earlier, is. Um, avoidance kind of being built into traditional therapy. Mm -hmm. um, medications, pharmaceuticals have come to play a huge role in the uh, treatment of mental health. Absolutely. Um, and within a typical therapeutic session of an hour uh, mm -hmm. with individuals who you have to develop relationships with over the course of months and years how much can how much can really be accessed and released in that time how how vulnerable can one really become and we see time and time again that vulnerability mm -hmm. being key mm -hmm. to the cathartic release or mm -hmm. to uh, the new levels of awareness uh, and so what you said about the mushroom being uh, the key difference mm -hmm. uh, is, really, is really worth us considering. Mm -hmm. uh, this medicine that we do consume, uh, that we have an experience that is so varied uh, and can teach us so many different things. But would you say it requires us buying in as well, or us giving ourselves over to the experience? Absolutely, absolutely. And we, we see resistance mm -hmm. in the trip space, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, people want to heal, um, but often they don't want to go through, they don't want to descend into that pain. Well, it's the pain they were trying to avoid all along, right? Right, and that, and that exacerbates and prolongs the, the healing journey, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the mushroom is so power, powerful, um, resistance is sometimes futile. Mm -hmm. It is sometimes. Um, but I think it's helpful to really give a... a may, maybe to dispel to some extent what I believe to be a myth that if you just take enough mushrooms mm. then you'll get the results that you want and we have seen like you said time and time again very resistant um, mm -hmm. individuals mm -hmm. uh, and and that's not a criticism or a judgment mm. but we mm. you are you as a therapist myself as a I don't know, compassionate person that loves to see what mushrooms do. Mm -hmm. We we want the people that we work with to get the most out mm -hmm. of working with mm -hmm. psilocybin. Mm -hmm. And so I just would love to take this time to encourage people when you go to the mushroom, because it is such a time-tested and safe and yes. powerful 
medicine, mm. that you can give yourself over to it completely, and that if you do your part, the mushroom will do its. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you, you've seen many clients come into your office uh, and resist exploring subconscious material. You've seen many clients come into this office uh, and resist exploring mm -hmm. some of this material. Mm -hmm. What suggestions uh, or tips might you give someone who's coming to psilocybin therapy for the first, first or 50th time okay. to get the most out of that mm -hmm. single session? Um, I would say that the mushroom is going to give you what you need, not always what you want. We can't wrestle this age-old medicine into doing our will. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, we can't. <laughs> That's where you're going to get your really challenging trip, uh. right? Um, and it's hard to be open and receptive when it's really challenging, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. you, so, I, I, I see when people come to us, they come sometimes with their very specific goals, right? I want to reset my default mode network, you know? I want to, what's another common one? Um, heal my just anxiety, depression, or a this. single instance this. of trauma. Right, right. right. Mm -hmm. And it all stems from this place where they do want to alleviate suffering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think mm -hmm. that in the West, at least, we've been sold a bill of goods that to suffer is abnormal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And people may not have much experience in being able to tolerate discomfort, which they most likely will have to do during retreat week. Okay, you usually have to descend before you ascend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so if we can normalize that process for people, to absolutely tell them you this is five, perhaps three, four, five challenging hours to heal an issue that has caused you pain for decades. Mm -hmm. Are you willing? To breathe through that if I sit by you will and to know that they have an ally there mm -hmm, with them mm -hmm. the mushroom is their ally well and you have brought up several times how crucial it is for them to have an experienced ally right so mm -hmm. you explored becoming a certified psychedelic therapist through some of the um, academic routes in the U.S., mm -hmm. but instead you took a significant risk and moved to Jamaica and mm -hmm. became a uh, therapist with Michael Meditations. Why did you choose this path to understand psilocybin-assisted therapy rather than a more conventional? Well, as you said, that was my intention, to go the more traditional mm -hmm. route. I had never used psychedelics, so I came at a very late age to Michael Meditations as a guest, and the healing I experienced was profound. There is no way that I could have conceptualized that healing just by reading the literature. Mm. So I think it's essential that any facilitator or any therapist that's going to do this work have plenty of hours of experience in the mushroom space themselves. Mm -hmm. We're all wounded healers mm. and we need to have done and continue to do our own work. Yes. Um, so the lessons that the mushroom taught me and the healing that I experienced myself made me realize pretty rapidly that I couldn't go back. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
I think you said it to me your second session, wasn't it? After your I think second it was session. my first session. After your first session. I turned to you and I said, how can I go back to my job? <laughs> and I didn't know how that would play out. I went back to my job. It's, I'm trying to find a way to, to, to phrase this, but you know, there's the kind of cliche that we're talking about in this video of, you know, a single session is worth 10 years of therapy mm -hmm. to a patient, uh, but to a therapist, a single session of psilocybin will make you quit your job as a therapist. <laughs> or, it will put, or it will put you out of business real yeah, fast. Yeah, if it'll flip your shingle. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, but listen, we see people come through and in the span of a week, make these profound transformations. Okay, they say- It's, it's. it's Right? And there are breakthroughs yeah. in traditional therapy, mm -hmm. no doubt. Mm -hmm. But consistently, in an integration session, mm -hmm. by that, that last integration session, I'm in tears, exper being able to witness what has happened in such a short span of time. It's such a privilege. Yes. So I would like to leave you all with that. But we will be back again with more videos, more conversations, more insights and questions. Look forward to bringing more information your way in the future.